Captain Baxter's tough too, Stepney went on, and rather rude, but he's worked in a quarry, and you know what that does to an engine's languages and manners. I do indeed, said Edward gravely. He's a good sort really, said Stepney. I like him. We both miss our work with trucks. During his first visit on the Fat Controller's Railway, Stepney had been telling Edward all about the other engines that he worked with on the Bluebell Line. Edward was very impressed. He wanted to know more, but was soon called away for shunting. Goodbye, Stepney, Edward whistled. Be sure to tell me more about your line later, won't you? If I catch you, I will, Stepney chuckled. Edward then puffed away while Stepney went back to working around the yards of Tidmouth. Later that day, Stepney found Toby, Percy and Thomas. The three engines had their trains ready, but Percy was annoyed. Is everything all right? Stepney asked. It's just Percy being Percy again, laughed Thomas. He thinks he can do everything on his own. I can do everything on my own, grumbled Percy. I don't need silly little tank engines and know-it-all tram engines to tell me what to do. We're only offering, said Toby. Stepney chuckled. You know what, Percy, he said. You remind me of an engine that I work with on the Bluebell Railway. Percy was surprised. Do I? Of course, Stepney laughed. It was one of the first engines I met after Rusty saved me from scrap. Please tell us about him, said Thomas. Stepney smiled, and this was the story he told. Shortly after Stepney settled on the Bluebell Railway after Rusty had saved him from scrap, he got to work with the railway's other tank engines. Adams, named after his designer, was the largest tank engine on the Bluebell Railway. He was very kind and very gentle, but Adams always wanted to do everything on his own. He would even get up in the earliest hours of the day and start work before any of the other engines had turned a wheel. Adams was always confident in himself and never accepted any help from the other engines, whether it was a heavy goods train or a suburban passenger service that ran from one side of the Bluebell Railway to the other. Time and time again, Stepney and the other tank engines tried to help Adams but they didn't prevail. Adams would always say the same thing. You deal with your work and I'll sort out mine, he would say in a stern tone. That way we can all be happy. And he would puff away before any argument could be made, until one day in the early autumn, when he noticed that Adams really needed help after all. It was also noticed that Adams was the oldest of the tank engines of the Bluebell Railway. On the morning that he would need help the most, Stepney pulled into the yard to see Adams coupled to a long line of trucks which were to go up north to the other railway. Stepney watched as Adams tried to move the train, but found that he couldn't. Now will you accept my help? Stepney asked. For the first time ever, Adams looked defeated. Yes, please, he pleaded. I'm sorry for turning you and the others away. Please help me, Stepney. Stepney was more than delighted. He coupled up front and the two engines double-headed all the way to the other railway. And luckily, Adams' train was on time. And from that day onward, Adams promised to accept help from the other tank engines of the Bluebell Railway. That was an amazing story, exclaimed Thomas. Thank you for sharing, added Percy. You're more than welcome, replied Stepney. It has been an honour coming to your railway and learning more about it. The engines all smiled. And another thing, Stepney said. You are all very lucky engines. Your line has got everything. And Stepney chatted all about his railway 
and even went on to how much he missed trucks, which then led to his encounter with a certain car belonging to the Ellsbridge cricket team. But that's another story.